Hello, my name is Karolina Spajic and this is Bora Bora. Uh, this evening uh, I have two special guests with uh, me, uh, two uh, theatre makers from uh, different countries. Uh, right uh, to me sit uh, Julia Valli, the actors, theatre pedagogue and theatre director, uh, who is working uh, 25 years with Odin Theatre based in Denmark. And left uh, on my side sit Anna Wolf, also an actor, also a theater pedagogue and theater director from Argentina. And they came together here in Amsterdam because uh, uh, we present uh, Seeds of Memory that is written and acted by Anna and directed by Julia. So I would like first to ask them how this happened. Who wants to answer? Um, the first thing that happened was uh, that I was giving a, a workshop in uh, Uruguay and Anna followed uh, the Odin Theatre from Argentina to Uruguay to participate in this workshop. Uh, since then, Anna, and this was three years ago, Anna has been writing to me and asking me to work with her more and uh, although I refused many times she insisted to the point that I had to accept I had no other choice but to say yes um, she came to Denmark for a period of time I also met her in on tour while I was in Peru and in Argentina again uh, Anna had a story that she very much wanted to tell it was a story that had very much to do with her own uh, experience in Argentina in the time of the dictatorship when uh, one of um, the neighbor's uh, son uh, disappeared. He was no longer at home. And Anna found out later that he was just one of the 30,000 missing people in Argentina. But at the time, the experience for her was through the eyes of a child, so not understanding as a child doesn't understand, but also uh, having the same reactions that the grown-ups had around her, of not being able to explain what was happening. very much wanted to tell this story. She felt it was a kind of responsibility towards the younger generation in her country. And uh, she asked me to help her with this. And I think that my uh, role in doing this is having a certain distance from the problem because I did not live in Argentina, so I was not personally involved in what was happening. And so I could see it with uh, colder eyes, let's say, uh, which helps tell the story. Um, so Anna came uh, to Denmark, we worked, and uh, then she went back to Argentina. We've had various meetings to create this performance. And now she is in Amsterdam, and I came from Denmark so that I could see the performance here. I don't know if you want to ask Anna, who can give you a different ah. version. <laughs> you have your own version, Anna. No, I, I don't have my own version. The only thing I have is the, no, the same story that Julie has told and uh, that I thought and I think that uh, for me, uh, Julia was and is the person who has to work with me on this performance and on this story because um, apart from, of, uh, apart from the the, the story of my country about the 30,000 missing people and the mothers of the Plaza de Mayo is also for me is a story. It's the first performance that I made after my father died. So for me also this story is about absence, the absence of a body. And um, it's also a way to bury the, the body of my father. And um, so it was a very special moment for me. Um, and I, and I think, uh, 
yes, I have chosen the right person to direct this. Um, and this also happened in Amsterdam now because of uh, theater. Yeah. I want to say thank you to you and to your group because I think if um, without your help and without the, the help of uh, all the person that works with you, uh, we could not be here. So we managed. <laughs> thank you. I would like to know, uh, because this performance uh, deal with a certain theme about uh, more, there is a theme about Argentinian uh, dictature in it mm -hmm. also, on a personal level, of course. I would like to know, because the performance performed in uh, Argentina, in New Zealand, in a uh, couple of countries in Europe, in mm -hmm. Belgium, in Denmark, um, do you think, uh, or did you both of you see that there are differences in reaction of publics? What is the general difference if you perform in Argentina or if you perform in other country? Um, obviously, uh, for um, us, the most important performance was in Argentina. The first time we presented it, I remember in La Plata, um, it was the first time that the mothers of Plaza de Mayo actually came with their white scarf on their heads. And I remember the, the, the feeling of, of seeing them coming into the performance and wondering how they would react, what would happen. And at the end of the performance, Anna, of course, was also very moved and in a way um, she didn't feel like uh, coming out after the performance. And I had to go and get her and I remember I took her by hand and took her to the mothers who were in the public. And they embraced her and they said, thank you. And that was a very particular, very strong moment. The other moment was when we showed the performance to the mother of the person that the performance is talking about. So somebody who is very directly engaged in what we were telling. And it was again incredible because she, when the performance was finished, she would say, ah yes, I'm going to organize this performance here and we're going to sell it there. And she was immediately going into a very strong reaction and it's like she was coming, she was 90, so not a very young person anymore, but she was coming with all the energy uh, and all the optimism in a way and all the, the view of life, that life must keep on and win, uh, that we always felt was in the back of wanting to make this performance. Then we can present it in Europe. Of course here uh, there are two ways of seeing it. One is uh, to make the story known, so to tell people in Europe that this has been happening in Argentina. So in a way it's a kind of historical documentation. But many people see it with a kind of artistic eyes. So in Europe you will get many more reactions which say, ah yes, uh, the actor is good, the director is good, uh, the uh, oh no, we think the performance is too strong, oh no, we think it's too soft. You get this kind of reaction. Of course, uh, for us to show it in Argentina, but other countries of Latin America also is very important. It, the performance has just been shown in a festival in Brussels, um, a festival of women's voices organized by Brigitte Kake. And in this festival, she had invited representatives of mothers of missing people from all over the world. And this, of course, again, was a very particular context in which to show it and was very moving uh, to bring the, like the seed of memory. Um, one of the women's from Belgrade who was talking about missing people there, she said she was going to take these seeds of memory back to her country and she hoped that they would spread. Yeah. And now what about young generation in Argentina? How they uh, saw the performance? Uh, about the young generation? Uh, I, could, I could say that there's two different young generation for me. One is a generation that belongs to uh, the people who has disappeared. They are the um, 
uh, sometimes the sons or, or uh, the daughters, um, and also it's a young generation that is working in an organization of human rights called Hijos, and, and they, they are the same in the same level of um, of political struggles than the mothers of the Plaza de Mayo, and then the, we have also the grandmothers of the Plaza de Mayo, and the familiars of missing people. So we have three organizations, and then we have this one, a new one, that is called Hijos. So for me, uh, thinking about this generation, is very important to have some of them in during the performance, apart uh, from the, of the mothers and the grandmothers. And it was the first time I had the, uh, some of them was very strong, because, um, if, you know, thinking about young generation in Argentina, we have a very special education. Uh, when we think about secondary school, we, we, we used to study European story, or European history, and uh, about Argentina history, we stopped uh, our learning, I think, at the, at the beginning of the century. So we don't know anything about 19... 30 or 1960, 1970. So there's a big hole in the new generations, belonging or not to the to some or political organizations, um, and they don't know what has happened because the the big generation, that the, the generation that belongs to, we can say 40 or 50 years, um, sometimes doesn't want to speak about this dark time of our history uh, because it's very it's not very comfortable to speak about this uh, you have to think also about what you have been doing during this period um, it's okay it's, it's not a judge uh, if you could not do anything or if you could not go out and shout you cannot go out and shout because you would be killed so uh, but some people is also a shame or didn't want or doesn't want to listen about this. So the same happened in, in the secondary school. The young people, a young generation, has not too much information about the dark times. And um, for me it's important to tell the story for this young generation that doesn't know too much, and uh, also for the, for the generation that has lost the, the familiars or the parents. And when they see the performance, Something happened, and um, perhaps sometimes I, I was before my performance. I used to listen the kind of sentences that I listened uh, during the military dictatorship. Like, uh, okay, if they disappeared, it's because they had been doing something. Mm -hmm. This is a classical sentence we used to say to to, mm. to yeah to say, and I have been listening this sentence uh, in the in the new generation, and I could not stand it. And uh, that made me, b makes me very angry. And they also say, okay, if the military t took the power, it's because the people that belong to the Argentina people want it. And it's not real. It's like uh, sentences that we used to fix, and these sentences is the same sentences that we put in the, into the uh, books of uh, history. And uh, so for me, the performance is also for, for the young generation. It's not that they have the truth, but it's, uh, it's a story that uh, I wanted to tell and uh, is uh, the, the story that uh, I think for me is necessary to tell about this time. No? And in Europe, that happened that... Uh, is America, Latin America is also a big curiosity. We continue being like, uh, for me, uh, the same when Cologne arrives to Latin America, I say, oh, we'll see the Andean people and the, <laughs> yes, also the mirrors and there will be gold and, gold and all the things. So I think sometimes I feel that uh, we continue being a curiosity and there's not too much people who knows exactly what has happened during the the military dictatorship in Argentina. It's a more well-known Pinochet, for example, that belongs to Chile. And um, I, think on one, I think that everything is mixed. Uh, Chile is mixing with Argentina, Argentina is mixing with Chile and with Brazil. It's like a, 
a dark area, Latin America or South America. And for me also, this uh, performance is a, a way of telling, of, of not allowed to the things that be massified. It's clear. Because Pinochet is not Videla, Macera, Agosti. And Videla, Macera, Agosti are the three persons that we are trying to judge and uh, they are guilty of uh, a genocide in Argentina. Mm -hmm. And so there are three names, different names from Pinochet. And um, for me, it's important to identify the names, identify the, the, the faces, and to tell a story that belongs to Argentina. And 30,000 people belongs to Argentina. Chile has 1,000 missing people. And it's more well-known, Pinochet, and the story of Chile, that the story of Argentina. I don't know why. I have to think why. What do you think? Why? I don't know. I think that uh, perhaps has a relation with the um, international help that Pinochet has had and also because Chile was more well known uh, because of the relation they had with uh, Britain, UK, United Kingdom. And also because Pinochet has made a success in Chile. Uh, the period that he has been in, in the government, economically in a, a thinking, it was a success. So there's a lot of people in Chile during democratic uh, period of times that they continue defending, defending Pinochet because they had been living a good life. So uh, I think it was a good luck for Pinochet to have succeeded with the economical things. It was different, totally different from my country. We have, after the military dictatorship, we have, uh, we had the the country totally destroyed, and without unemployment and all the things. It was the contrary on Chile. So, but I don't know if this this could be, or it has a relation with this. I think now. Um, I would like uh, to say that there are more connections between Julia and Anna. Julia is one of the founders of the Magdalena. This is the, if I say well, maybe you can Magdalena say project. Magdalena project. And Anna is one of the founders of a Magdalena second generation. So maybe they want to explain more about that. Uh, the Magdalena Project um, is a project of women in a contemporary theatre. It's a network. And it started in 1986 when Jill Greenhalgh of Cardiff Laboratory Theatre in uh, Cardiff in Wales organised a festival. And it was a festival of three weeks when she, where she brought together uh, 36 women from very different groups and uh, countries all over the world. And after this festival, we decided that we wanted to continue. And so from a festival, it became a project. And it has continued with um, other festivals, meetings, workshops, productions. At the moment, um, the latest things which have been happening is um, we have made a, a website in which we have uh, different uh, information of what is going on. I am editing a journal which is called The Open Page, which comes out once a year. Uh, in Argentina they've been doing uh, meetings. Uh, in New Zealand they had a festival last year, which brought together women from all over the world. Uh, I will be organizing in January 2001 a festival in Hostebro in Denmark. So it's an activity which has spread all over the world and it's difficult to say exactly how um, big or how, how much the influence of the project has at the moment. And what is exactly Magdalena second generation in Argentina? I don't know really what's in second generation in Argentina. I could say that second generation started because I was uh, in a festival that Julia has organized in, Trans in Denmark called Transit and um, it was a very strong festival for me because I found strong women reference until the moment I think I, 
I had the um, male reference, they were strong. So for me it was very important. And uh, um, I don't used to be calm or sitting, looking and looking the things during the transit festival and uh, after. I wanted to do my own things and I wanted to, to do new things. But transit belongs to, to her and to, and to this first generation. So when I return to my country, I say, OK, we are a new generation. We have 30 years old. We have uh, perhaps different problems. And I want to, to know what happened with us. Perhaps we'll find at the end of the way, I don't know when, that the problems are the same, or the way of taking the problems will be the same. But as I didn't know, and I don't know, so when I returned uh, two years ago, two years and a half ago to Argentina, I talked with um, one of my friends, Florencia Coppola, and we say, okay, we are going to start with Magdalena's second generation, and we have we are this 30 years old, and we we can do it. So we can do it in a country that. Um, doesn't support the culture and the, uh, talking about women is worse because it's culture and women so uh, it was and it is yeah it's very difficult and Magdalena second generation function because of our own economy so um, we organized some meetings around one topic like uh, women uh, solitude and I think it was it was nice we start with this topic with solitude because we found that a lot of uh, women from our generation used to say, okay, I would like to work with a group, and we finish working alone. So this is another thing we have to think about. Why is happening this, no? And then um, the, uh, last year we organized a first festival, and we invited Deborah Hunt from Puerto Rico, and Julia, and also Vania Constant from Unit Kingdom, um, and also we, we try to look for reference, for women reference, that belongs to our country. This is important for us. Um, and we try to follow the steps of the first generation. So when we start, we say, okay, the first generation has organized a festival, the first generation has a newsletter, so we printed um, a newsletter and um, also, we continue putting money, of, it was our money. So, and I think now, after two years of working, um, I think we have to think about going through another level, that is to find uh, support, just to continue, because it's uh, too exhausted to um, support a network with your own money, and this is, I think, is make the things uh, harder. And uh, I really want to want want to continue working with women in Latin America because I I think there's a, a lot of work to do, not only in Argentina, um, really a lot of work. I I really want that uh, women could be stronger and women could be for me the Magdalena is the possibility of find of finding a um, female reference. So and uh, I think. Women in Latin America, we need to find women reference just to stop saying that I want to be strong as a man. So, um, yes, I want, I want this. But to be able to, to be this, I also need to find the way of, um, of being supported for, by somebody, or I don't know if somebody could listen to this <laughs> SOS. Uh, we are ready to <laughs> to receive just a couple of coins or something like this. So this is Magdalena's second generation. So as I understood well, you plan really to spread with this Magdalena second generation to m more countries in Latin America. Yeah, and also in Europe. I don't know, but uh, when I when I arrived and last year and at uh, Wales, uh, there was just young women talking about second generation, I said, ah, okay, because first was Magdalena Segunda Generación, this is in Spanish. Yes. And then I started 
listening about Magdalena Second Generation, and then in New Zealand everybody talk about Magdalena Second Generation. So it's not only uh, that Second Generation belongs belongs to Argentina or Latin America. I think I don't know what is now. It's a network, and as Julia say, we cannot find a place for a network. A network is something that. It's like a, a third level of reality. It's like, for me, it's like a big mail or a big list of names that you, you know, if you organize something, you can contact or you can make contacts. If somebody needs something, you can say, okay, there's another woman that works on this. There's another woman that is working, who is working in prison. You want to do this, okay, you can contact them. So, and then this is a, it's a, it's a, um, a paper of relation. It's, it's, yes, it's a paper like a computer. It has all the information. Just, or your head. You have not a computer, you have the information in your head and you can contact the people. I think it's very different from a computer, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I once uh, trying to explain what the Magdalena is and I, because of it being a net, one thinks of the net with the, the lines, the lines that cross but in fact, I think that the, what defines the network are the holes in between. And you don't know what is in that hole. But all these personal relationships which are changing all the time and which uh, uh, can start an activity and then find somebody else somewhere else and which are always changing, which means that you can't catch hold of them and say, it is exactly this. That's, that is what is important in this Magdalena network. And so uh, the hole in between these lines, which are made of the people, is actually what is happening with the Magdalena. And to go back to my introduction, um, as I said before, Julia is uh, for 25 years actress of Odin Theatre, uh, based in Holstebro in Denmark. And, uh, of course, uh, most of the people know uh, Odin Theater, but I think it's interesting that Julia can say what they are doing at this moment and what it will be her next tour. Well, in fact, I come uh, ye uh, yesterday from uh, a big uh, moment in our history because Eugenio Barba, our director, has just received the Sonning Prize, which is a very prestigious uh, prize in Scandinavia. And uh, so we were at, uh, officially received by the university and we had lots of speeches and uh, uh, official dinners and things. Um, the, the prize, which is uh, 500,000 uh, kroner, which is a lot of money, has been divided um, between uh, Conjunto, which is um, a theatre magazine from Cuba, uh, which has uh, been existing many years. Uh, uh, Holstebro's uh, Folkegeo, which means um, the people's present, uh, which is uh, an initiative which has started in Holstebro, which is our hometown in Denmark, um, where they are gathering money to build a school and a place for young people to be together in Tirana. And also it has been given uh, to a priest in Denmark who has just lately been fined because he has um, protected uh, illegal immigrants in uh, uh, Denmark. So in a way he has chosen his conscience instead of obeying to what the state uh, declares. Um, and tomorrow I will be going back to Denmark and then uh, uh, the day after I will be leaving for Italy. We will be uh, uh, presenting all our performances in Rome for a very long, uh, a whole month we're staying in Rome at the Teatro di Roma. And we will present Mitos, which is our latest uh, group performance. Uh, Ode to Progress, which is a, a kind of a street musical performance in the skeleton of the whale, uh, another group performance, and all the solo performances and demonstrations and give workshops. So we have a full activity. And for you, Anna, you, when uh, you leave the Amsterdam, where are you going to travel with your solo performance and how it looks like? 
Okay, we can ask to the oraculo. <laughs> um, I really don't know. I have to wait. Uh, for me, the, the work in theatre is like this. Um, there's some possibilities and some people who have said, okay, I would like to have your performance here. Like I know that in Morocco there will be a, an international conference of uh, missing people um, on June, so they have invited seats of memory to go there, but we have to wait for the answers. And also there will be a meeting on July in Germany <coughs> about uh, the topic, <coughs> sorry, is who wants to be a woman tomorrow in Braunschweig. <laughs> Braunschweig. So, and also there will be a festival in Yugoslavia, Novisa, and very great. Um, so, but um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm just waiting for some concrete answers and to be in Europe just to travel with my performance if it is possible. And um, so this is just for now. And I can say because uh, I saw uh, different places and I really hope that we will have chance to see all these performances again in Holland because they are extremely high quality. And I want to thank uh, Julia very much uh, for being with us uh, this evening in Amsterdam. And Anna that uh, performed two times in Amsterdam in Westerhaasfabriek. And uh, I really hope uh, that we will see each other again in Amsterdam. Thank you very much.